I just want to summarize some of the points that he made based on the, on the fiqh um, of Ramadan. That there's uh, the many types of, of, of fasting. One of the things is people don't know that there are many types of fasting. So one is the fast of Ramadan, which is fard, and the other one is the fast of the Ramadan, the, the fast that you miss in Ramadan and you make up after Ramadan. So that's also fard on you to make that up. So people, especially the women who can't fast during those days, or the men if they get sick or traveling or anything like that, that they have make it up, that's a, the, the, the fast. And then the, uh, the wajib is if you make a, a intention to say, I'll fast if this, if, if I get this job, or, or if you have a child in tribulation, that if Allah removes it, I'll fast for it. So you can do an, another, you know, and that becomes a fast of the, that is wajib, which is very close to fard. And then you have the sunnah, which is the, like he was talking about, um, the, the sunnah is the ashura and tasua. Like when we, the, the Muharram, when we fast, the, you know, you, you fast the two days, not the one day. The one day is makru, the two day is, is, is this, the sunnah. And then, so then you have the mustahab, uh, which is the, you know, the recommended days. So then you have, you know, like nafal, type of nafal uh, thing. And then the, the three days of the, of the month also, the, the three days of the month is really good, uh, really good practice for those who want to fast. Because there's a beautiful hadith, a man came to the Prophet and he asked, uh, Ya Rasulullah, I want to give me, I want to uh, fast. And the Prophet ﷺ told him, uh, fast ayamul uh, abyad, you know, this, the day, the white days they call it. This is the, um, the 13, 14, 15 days of the month. So this is when the, it's a full moon. So then he said, no, I want more, Ya Rasulullah. And then so the Prophet ﷺ said, fast Mondays and Thursdays. He said, no, I want more, Ya Rasulullah. And then the Prophet ﷺ told him, then do the fast of Dawud ﷺ, fast every other day. When he got older, in his old age, he said, uh, woe unto me, I should have taken the first advice of the Prophet ﷺ, because that was the best advice. And the, the advice of the Prophet ﷺ was always filled with rahmah and gentleness, and it's something that you can actually keep, because it became very difficult for him when he was old to fast every other day. But if he fasted those three days of the month, it would be easier to keep it, something that, as, as a practice. Now, there's another thing that I saw. That I, I read an article about the study that they did on uh, cell reversal. You know how people do this fasting for health purposes? Because the cells, they actually, they, they reverse and they start healing. You know, people who are diabetic and people who have uh, heart problems and other issues, they do fasting. And one of the things that it says in that article, it said, it has to be a minimum of three days, your fast, in order for this to work, so which is one of the miracles of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So those three days are good sunnahs, people who want to fast. Um, this one, my, our teacher, he recommended that. He said that, you know, we should start practicing that as an ummah uh, to do those three days. Uh, and then obviously, um, then then you have the, the fast of, the, which is makru, which is the days of Eid, makru, there's two types of makru explained. Uh, tanziha and tahrima. Tanziha is right up. It's 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 not close to haram, but tahrima is close to haram. So those are the days of Eid. You know, we're not supposed to fast on days of Eid. And then also, uh, there's some, you know uh, the three days after the Eid uh, of Qurban, which is the days of Hajj. Um, those five days. So. But then another thing that he said that was very beautiful is that um, is that Imam Ghazali in his Ihya he divides the fasting in three categories, which is the the fasting of the Am, the Khas, and the Khas al Khas. The, the 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 ordinary people, the Awam, everybody that you know that we are, and then the, the elect, and then the elect of the elect. So for the people of Am, what they fast, we just fast from. Uh, not eating, not drinking, and uh, we don't get close to our spouses uh, for our desire of our bodies. That's our fast. But the fast of the, the elect is not only those, but they, they, they control their tongues. 
They don't speak anything un unless that's beautiful. And if you look at the, the Quran, when they ask Maryam, the mother of Jesus, she says, I fa I'm fasting, therefore I'm not going to speak. In other words, they didn't, literally they didn't speak when they fast. But our religion, because it is the religion of our Prophet Sallallahu and it's a religion of mercy, we speak. The one who believes in Allah in his last day, they say that which is beautiful and good, or they keep silence. So we speak, but we speak beautifully, and we do dhikr, and, and we say things that are beautiful. So they control not only those three things from abstaining from eating and drinking, and, and, uh, and, and, and thank you, but also in sexual desires, but also from uh, controlling their tongue and their ears from not listening to haram and, and basically controlling their limbs. But then there's a khas al khas, the elect. These are the saints. On top of all of that, their heart is in, in the state of fasting. Their intellect is in the state of fasting, which means their presence with Allah. They're always, they're, they're so connected with Allah that, that they can't even have a bad thought. So uh, it's, it's the heart the mind, the body, and the soul, all of it are state of fasting. So that next thing is the, the uh, what we call the condition of fasting. Who should fast? Who is fardan? And there are three conditions plus one. Uh, some, some added it. As a matter of fact, I had a discussion with my teacher last night about this because uh, in the Sharh of Nur al-Ida, he talks about the fourth one. And he, he gave a beautiful explanation. But traditionally, it was only three conditions, which is you have to be a Muslim, you have to be baligh, you have to be someone who had puberty, and you have to be aqil, you have to be intelligent. In other words, you're not a madman. Because mad people, they don't have to pray, they don't have to fast. They're mad. They don't make sense out of the world. But that madness, what, what the doctor was saying, is not someone who says, oh, like you know how some people, they're like kind of gullible, but they went to school and they can read and they can write. That's that's that doesn't give me an excuse not to fast. This is really majnoon. People who are crazy, uh, they don't have. That's is they they are uh, you know. Or another thing that he said, which was very beautiful, because you know one thing about fiqh is that a lot of the stuff in fiqh, if you are a doctor, an MD, and a faqi, it, it's just it's just a, a beautiful. It's a it's a gold mine. And he, he is an MD and a, uh, a faqi, so he, he said that, for example, today we have Alzheimer. They are excused from fasting because they will fall under this, this condition. Although they are not mad, but they can't remember anything. You know, they just, it, they fall into this. this uh... So the fourth one, what they say is that to have the knowledge of fasting. So that's a good example is, Someone becomes Muslim, they just meet a Muslim, they're interested, wow, that's a good religion, they take their shahada. But nobody tells him that, they tell him, okay, we believe in Allah and the last day and the Prophet and all this. But they don't explain that fasting is fard on you, it's mandatory on you. So they don't know anything, they don't even know what fard is yet. Then Ramadan comes and they're not fasting, they are excused because they don't have the knowledge that's mandatory on them. Until they know... And one of the things the doctor said, which was beautiful, is that be gentle with the converts. You know, don't just put them all the rules in their head that they might just leave Islam and say, oh man, I can't handle all of this. So slowly by slowly, the Prophet wasallam said, give converts four years. In other words, it takes time for them to learn all of these uh, practices. Uh, <sighs> The other thing that was really amazing, because this a lot of people get this question, if somebody is instead of Janaba, uh, so let's say they have some kind of relationship with their spouses, or they have a dream that gets them instead of Janaba, they wake up in the morning in this Ramadan, and they're fasting. They're like, oh my God, I'm not pure. I have to make ghusl. I didn't make ghusl. in my fast uh, valid? The fast is valid. Even if you don't make ghusl all day, your fast is valid. And... It was beautifully said by, by Doctor that everything in Islam is separate. You, if, if you're instead of Janab and you miss your Dohr prayer, you sin for Dohr. That doesn't take away from your reward of fasting. So your fast is separately rewarded, your prayer is separately rewarded, or anything that you do is separate. It's not all, oh no, if you did this, everything is wiped out. No. So 
the, the, the sinfulness of, of the person who missed a prayer because they're instead of Janaba, that's separate, they get punished for that. But the fast is not invalidated. Uh, um, obviously, it's highly recommended to do ghusl before, but some people forget or they wake up in that state, their fast is valid. So, now what breaks fasting? There's two types of fast, two types of things that break fasting. It's so good to have a faqih. You just copy them. You don't have to do any studies. No, I actually did. did he told me to read. So I, I've been reading the Nurul Ida in the past week. It's good every year to repeat the Ramadan and, and uh, whatever, you know, when Hajj time comes to do the fiqh of Hajj and all that. So just to be acquainted with it because you forget. Uh, so what breaks fasting? There's two types of mufsidat of, of fasting. Things that break. One is that you make qada, you, you make it up. The other ones, you make it up and there's a punishment for it. The punishment is basically it's 60 days of fasting for, for men uh, consecutively. So you have to fast for 60 days consecutively. The reason why they did that is for you not to do this stuff. They are, they are such big crimes. Don't do it. That's why Allah is, you know, is, is you know, the, the fuqaha, when they look at the, the, these, these rulings, they say, this is grievous. Don't do this, otherwise the punishment is grievous. So people would have fear of, I'm not going to do this. I'm, I can't fast for 60 days, right? So uh, obviously freeing a slave is not uh, in our time. Uh, fasting for 60 days, and then if you can't, then you feed people, and we'll talk about that as well. And if you can't, there were people, there's a famous story of a Sahabi who, uh, Sheikh Hamza mentioned this story many years ago to us, and it was really eye-opening, that he comes and said, you know, I, I, I've destroyed myself, O Messenger of Allah. I said, what did you do? He goes, I slept with my wife and while I was fasting. And the Prophet said, SubhanAllah, uh, you know, you have to free a slave. He said, I, I don't have any slaves to free. Like, and then he says, I don't have any money like, you know, to do that. And then he said, the Prophet said, fast for 60 days. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, I couldn't fast in Ramadan, I made a mistake. He said, fast for 60 days consecutively. And then so the Prophet says, okay, the free slave, you can't do it. Then he says, okay, fast, uh, go ahead and feed 60 pe people. So he, uh, he says, okay, uh, but he didn't have money to buy food for these people. So the Prophet he helped them with money to buy these things. And he said, go ahead now, get this food and go give it to 60 people. He said, who should I? He said, give it to the fuqara, the poor people. He said, my family and my tribe is very poor. Can I give it to them? He said, go give it to them, to your own family and your, you know, to the tribe. So it's, So the religion is about ease. It's not about hardship. And then if you're unable to do any of those, if you're poor, you can't afford to do anything, and you're sick and you can't make up 60 days, you know, all of the book of fiqh, they say, just ask Allah for forgiveness. But instead of brokenness and ajz, inshallah. So, those are if you eat uh, or drink to break your fast purposely. So, you're fasting, say, you know what? I don't care. I'm going to drink in Ramadan. You do that, that's 60 days. Plus the one day of the fast that you missed, that, that you just broke. For the sisters, because they can't fast for 60 days consecutive, they're away from that, but they have to make that 60 days, basically. And then if you get close to your spouse while fasting, uh, that you actually do the actual action. Uh, then there are facade that actually, uh, you just make qada, like, uh, you know, they, uh, those are the things that you, you, it breaks your fast, but it doesn't like one of the things that he said, and, and I love this very much. This counts, this explanation of him again, uh, being a doctor, it makes, it makes much more sense. That if you're swimming or you're taking a shower and water goes into your ear, your fast is fine, it doesn't break your fast. But if you put drops in your ear, like you know, if you have earache or something like that, you put drop, it actually breaks your fast. And he said the reason why is because there is between the throat and the ear there's a canal. But when you get infection or earache, 
that there's a, there's a little curtain between the ear that's, that actually gets, there's a hole in it, it gets ripped. Once it gets ripped, that drop goes from the ear into the canal in the throat. So it will actually go inside your, 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 your body. So that's the reason. But if you're not sick, it doesn't allow it to pass that, to go through the canal, which is really beautiful. Uh, so, but also he mentioned from the book, Sheikh Abdullah bin Bayya, Hafizullah, uh, Sana'atul Fatwa. In the book, he mentions about a fatwa that was given by the European Fatwa Council that they actually do allow the, uh, the use of uh, ear um, drops, um, eye drops, ear drops, and also um, the, um, the spray for people who have uh, asthma. So that's, they allow it. But in, in the tradition, Hanifi Fiqh, they don't allow those spray. Although oxygen is allowed because oxygen is just air. Correct? Oxygen is just air. You just, you know, people who have those oxygen that they need to do to uh, help them with breathing. That's a lot because there's nothing out. It's the same air that you breathe. It, it just helps you. So, um, another beautiful thing he said, which is also in Nurul Ida, it says, um, if you break your fast accidentally, it, it, it doesn't break your fast. So, for example, you're sitting there, you're drinking tea, you forgot it was Ramadan. Mm. and then you remember, oh my God, it's fasting, or somebody reminds you, and then so you stop at that moment, you don't chew, or so you spit out whatever you have in your mouth. That doesn't break the fast, even if you do it multiple times, and it happened to me, uh, pretty much all, I think every year, the first day, I had either something in my mouth, or, or, or just ate it, and I'm like, oh my God, it's fasting, so it, it people, ha it happens. Uh, the Persian, they have a beautiful power, they say that you're a guest of God, like if it happens, you're the guest of God. Allah is just letting you eat. And while you can't eat, he lets you eat and, and your, your fast is still valid. But he said about the gentleness of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his mercy, that the Prophet Sallallahu said, if you see somebody that is, while in Ramadan, they're, they're eating in the daytime, he said, if they're, if they're young, immediately tell them, hey, hey, it's fast, it's Ramadan, why you, aren't you fasting? But he said, the Prophet said, if they're really old and they're weak, let them just be gentle. Let them eat. And this is so beautiful of our Prophet until they, they, they remember themselves. And then uh, traveling, obviously, uh, Khilaf on the mileage, 48 miles, 52 miles, 56 miles. Um, it's around that, that, that area. I, I usually do the 50. 56 miles, 57 miles. Uh, if you're traveling, you have a rukhsa, which means you cannot, you can, you choose not, not to fast or you can fast. But here's what uh, Sheikh Hamza told us. Um, if you're traveling on a plane and it's long distance, let's say you're going to New York or you're going to Europe and it's eight hours and seven hours, he said, you must break your fast. Because a lot of people, if you don't, that's why in, in, on the plane they keep bring. why they bring you water? They just keep bringing you water. If you don't drink water, you can get sicknesses where it can have heart attack and die. Literally, it can kill you. And people died on the plane uh, from, you know, if they don't drink uh, water. So if it's a long travel, but as the doctor said, if you're traveling to Sacramento, it's an hour and a half drive, you don't have to break your fast. You can just go and, and, and fasting. As long as it doesn't harm you in any way, uh, you can, uh, you know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't fast if it harms you. And then also those people who are sick, uh, the sickness, they don't, you don't really need a doctor's notice. If you know that you're really, really sick, that you can't fast, Allah knows and you know, and that's it, that's, that's your notice. But also if your doctor says that, hey, if you fast, it's, this is, will make you worse, uh, then you shouldn't. But then about people who are diabetic, and we have a lot of people in our community, if you're type A, type A is the medicine, right? Type 2 is the injection, right? Yeah, type A, if you're taking just the medicine, he said you can reverse the medicine and do it at the star time and suhoor time, instead of doing it in the morning and evening. So you can take the same medicine, it's the same distance, you, you, you take your one pill at the star and the other pill, you do it at suhoor and you can fast. It actually helps people lose weight and actually is good for them. Uh, and, but if it, you can, everybody should just see how things goes. 
if it gets bad, don't do it. If it gets better, why not? Um, I know that, you know, I know quite a few people that actually do fast and they feel much better in Ramadan than other times. And they have uh, those kind of sicknesses. And then the sadaqa is, is basically um, is people who can't fast. So if you're young and you're sick, that doesn't mean you just give sadaqa and say, you know what, hey, here's $10 a day, I'm done, and, and uh, khalas. No. If you're young, you wait until you get well, and then you make up those days. All right? But if you're old and you have chronic diseases that you can't be healed, and you know that you can't make up these days, then you have to keep, um, you, have, you have to pay. Which they say, some places they say $5, it's two meals, some say $7. But he always told us the past few years, at least do ten dollars so people have a hearty meal, right? And, and donate that to the fuqara. And then uh, itikaf uh, is sunnah in the month of Ramadan. Obviously, uh, people used to do it at the masjid. Um, and then there's another itikaf that that was my question for him. Uh, there's a second type of itikaf that you do. Um, you say, if this happened, I'll do it a cough, right, instead of fasting. So then you, that becomes a wajib on you. If you say it, it becomes wajib. You have to do it. And then, then you would do that at a masjid for the man and at, the, at home for a woman. And you have, you, majority of the ulama, they say you have to also fast and do the eight uh, cough, even if it's not in Ramadan. Okay. So that was the fiqh. And if you have any question at the end, we'll take question about fiqh. And doctor is here, he can answer. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ, you know, he used to give good news to, the, to his companionship, to all his companions, Sahaba, that the month of Ramadan is coming. This is a month filled with blessing. And everything in life, like this masjid has a door. You have to enter through the door to the masjid. If you go to a mall, there's a door you have to enter. And so, لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ بَابٌ وَبَابُ عِبَادَةٍ أَسْيَامٍ Everything has a bab and entrance, and the entrance of ibadah is fasting. This is really, fasting is, is the pinnacle of worship. Because every act of worship, right? كُلُّ عَمَلِ إِبْنِ آدَمٍ All of the action of children of Adam is theirs. إِلَّا السِّيَامٍ Except fasting. Allah, it's a hadith Qudsi that Allah says, except fasting, right? Fasting is whose? Allah says, it's mine. Fasting is mine, and I'm going to give the reward for it. Now that hadith, why is everything yours and fasting is his? Because everything that you do, you do prayer, 10 times the reward. You do an amazing prayer, spiritual heart, 70 times. You can get 700 times the reward. But where's the number that Allah put for fasting? There's no number for it. He said, I will reward it. And because Allah's reward is infinite, because his treasure house is, is inexhaustible, when he gives, he gives beyond numbers. And that's why they say it's his. And there's a beautiful tradition of a man who comes on the day of judgment, and he has a lot of good deeds. But people come and say, oh, he cheated me. Get this. Oh, he did this to me. And he started losing all his deeds. It's kind of like, you know, when the government puts a levy, if you owe them, you can't even, what happened to my banking? And I had money, but no, the government, you owe taxes and they take it away from you. Even though it's your hard-earned money, but you didn't pay your taxes, they take it away from you. They will, people will put levy on your action, on your, on your rewards on the day of judgment, because it's a day of nafsi, nafsi. Everybody wants it. And then this man is left with nothing, and they put his little weight on one side of the scale, and his act of disobedience outweighs it. And say, oh my God, with all these things, I'm going to go to hell? And then Allah says, wait. He says, bring those treasure houses that nobody has access to. He said, what is that? He said, I thought this was all my... He said, no, no, no. The special reward for your fasting. And they bring these treasure boxes that nobody can touch, nobody can take away. And it says, open it. And when they open it, they keep pouring into this, and it, it just keeps coming, all of the rewards into the other side of the scale, until it outweighs his sin. And then Allah says, enter my paradise. So 
the, the actions the, in, the, in the month of Ramadan, nobody can touch it. It's Allah's and it will come to save you. And this is why as Jannah, the Prophet ﷺ said that the fasting is a shield. It's a shield between you and the fire of hell. It protects you from the fire of hell. From the fire of hell. And the other hadith that the Prophet ﷺ said, and this everybody can testify to this, is Adakhala Shahrul Ramadan, Futihat Abwabul Jannah, Wa Ghulliqat Abwabul Nar, Wa Sufidat al That when month of Ramadan enter, all of the doors of heavens are open, and every door to the fire of hell is closed, and all of the shayateens are locked up. And you can feel it. There are people that we know that they never do anything good. And then in Ramadan, they're fasting, they're praying, they're doing taraweeh, they're doing reading Quran, they're giving charity, because it's a time really the shayateen have no influence over you. And the rahmah is coming because of the doors of, of mercy, of, of paradise is open. Now, you still would see people that would do evil in Ramadan, and they're Muslim. And you wonder, how is that possible? Those are the people that have ruined their souls. If you have a good soul, if you have a good heart, and your heart, Ramadan comes and you're good, that means shaitan got the best of you in 11 months. You're just being tricked by shaitan. But you're actually good. That's why you're doing good in Ramadan. But if you're doing bad in Ramadan, that's a bad sign. That means that you have, you have lost your, you have sold your soul to shaitan. Now you become a human shaitan. You don't need shaitan to, uh, to misguide you. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that لِسَّائِمِ farhatan That a, a, a fasting person has two joys. This hadith is very beautiful. Very beautiful. Farhatun عِنْدَ الْإِفْطَارِ وَفَرْحَةٌ عِنْدَ لِقَاءِ الرَّبِّ That one of the farha, one of the, 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 the joy is when he breaks his fast. And one of the joys is when he meets his Lord. I always had, I always like wondered, why would eating food be the same as seeing your Lord? Like, it's, it just isn't, it didn't, it's two different things. Like seeing Allah meeting Allah and then baking, like eating something, it's not about eating. This hadith is not about eating. It's about completion of the fast. That's how amazing this, this, these days of Ramadan are. That the, the, the fact that you complete the fast and you're, all day you're sitting there, you're working, you're doing things, you're thirsty, water is there, you're not drinking it. Food is there, you're hungry, you're not eating it. And you're abstaining from all of these. And you're waiting and waiting until it says, Allahu Akbar. And in that moment, without delay, immediately say, Bismillah. And you do your dua and you drink your water or your chai or your ruafza or whatever or your you know, dates. And that is the joy of completing the, Ya Alhamdulillah, I completed a day of fasting. And that day of fasting, is the, the, the meaning of it is so amazing that we will only know on the day of judgment. So, there are many benefits to, to fasting. Suha is one of them. That, you know, it's, it's really for people for good health. Now, you know, there's a whole movement within the non-Muslim community that they do intermittent fasting. And it's just fasting has become a phenomenon in, in the world. Everybody's fasting now. And... And then there's also uh, another benefit that it's actually it's actually uh, really good to fast because you would know about the state of those people who really don't have food and drinks. One of the tragedies of our time is that our children grow up with refrigerators and they think food and drink is always there. They never experience hunger. They never experience that concept, oh, there's nothing. One of the advice that uh, Habib Ali al-Jifri gave us many years ago, when he first came to America about 25 years ago, he said, one day a week, have nothing in your house, no food, nothing, no drink, no food, nothing, no juice, everything cleared up, hide everything from your children, and just have bread, water, and maybe some yogurt, and that's it. And children come to say food, they said, that's all we have. Let them 
see that not always is a luxurious time so they can get used to this idea we might not have food one day and they have this connection with the fuqara with the poor people Sayyidina Umar says be rough on yourself because blessings do not last because not always is going to be this this uh, uh, rose garden of life where everything oh I want I want water and the water comes in and then they can Baba the fridge the water doesn't come from fridge Okay, so let's figure this out. They think that the water is always supposed to come from the fridge. Uh, so we have to teach our children that, that concept, that in, in Ramadan especially, that, you know, to be connected with the fuqara, inshallah ta'ala. But the primary purpose of Ramadan is not for health, nor it is to know about the state of the fuqara. Those are secondary. The primary purpose of Ramadan is... Uh, the primary purpose of Ramadan is, is taqwa. You know, kutiba alaykum usiyam kama kutiba ala ladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. That we have prescribed this, for, this, this for you. Now, in, in medicine, you have two types of drugs. You have over-the-counter drugs and you have prescription drugs. Over-the-counter drugs is, you know, is anybody can go and get it, it's good. Like what we call, like doing dhikr is over-the-counter. Like saying Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. It had no side effect, you know. But prescription is specific, you know. It's it's like if you get uh, if you get really sick and you can't go and get hey, give me some antibiotic to get healed from this sickness. This is prescription. Ramadan, we prescribed it for you, right? It's a prescription that what is what does it bring out at the end of it? Because Allah says we have prescribed it for you as we have prescribed it for those who came before you. So from, the, from Adam, Ali salam, to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, all of them fasted, but a different format. The fast that we have is very unique. In order for you to become God conscious, in order for you to know who Allah is, in order for you to know, if you know who Allah is, then you know who you are. And if you know who you are, then you have a connection with Allah. It's, it's a two-way street knowing yourself. Iqbal, rahmatullah alayhi said, he said, as hamak as kenaragir, sohbat ashana talab. Ham as khuda khudi talab, ham as khudi khuda talab. He said, abandon everyone and seek the companionship of the only familiar one. Allah, Allah is the only one who knows you. Allah is the only one who knows you. Nobody else knows you, your reality, right? He said, seek the companionship of the only familiar one. Then, seek to know yourself through the light of God and seek to know God through your own heart. So, Ramadan comes in. It's a month of taqwa where we get to know ourselves. We get to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this connection is built. Because without taqwa, human being is in loss. Human being is in loss. And that connection is essential. And that's why Allah constantly, every year, He sends Ramadan that if you miss disconnected with me, I'm going to give you another opportunity to connect. It's every year it comes. And that's the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He sends down Ramadan every year in order for us to get connected back to, uh, to His mercy. So... So, the virtue of Ramadan. Ramadan, Shahr uh, Ramadan, the Quran. The Quran says that we reveal the Quran this month, in this month of Ramadan. And we also know that the Suhaf of Ibrahim السلام, was revealed in the first of Ramadan. We know that the Torah was revealed in the 13th of Ramadan. We know that Zabur was revealed in, in, the, in, in, in Ramadan as well. Uh, Suhaf was, uh, Taurat was revealed on the 6th and, and Zabur was revealed on the 13th and Injil was revealed on the 18th and on the Laylatul Qadr Allah revealed the Quran all of them because revelation is you know Sayyidina Abu Bakr was with the Prophet and his, his knee was under the knee of the Prophet they were sitting next to each other and then Sayyidina Abu Bakr said my knee I thought it was going to my joint are going to break it's just this heavy, just start getting heavy and heavy and heavy. And it was revelation that was coming to the Prophet ﷺ, right? This, this vibration that, that, that of, of revelation. And then 
You know, it's like when he said it was like a camel sitting on my knee. That's how heavy. I mean, imagine the heart of the Prophet ﷺ that can take. This was just his knee touching the knee of the Prophet ﷺ, of, of Abu Bakr Siddiq. This revelation that when Musa Ali Salam said, I want to see you, Allah said, look at Mount Sinai, and Mount Sinai just turned into dust. Literally, just with revelation. لَوْ أَنزَلْنَا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ عَلَى جَبَلٍ لَرَأَيْتُ خَاشٍ مُتَسَبِّعًا مِنْ خَشِيَةِ اللَّهِ That it will turn it into dust, this Qur'an. This is how, this is the power of revelation. And yet the heart of the Prophet ﷺ was stronger than the Mount Sinai that could contain that. And this month, imagine this month, the power of this month, that Allah chose this, that all of the revelation was revealed in this month. The merit of it is so much that Allah divided it into three portions. That the beginning of it is rahmah, is mercy. The middle of it is forgiveness. And the end of it is freeing from fire. If, you, if it was a month of mercy, it would have been good enough. But Allah said, no, I just give one third mercy. The second third is maqfira, forgiveness. And at the end, I just keep freeing you from the fire. This is the nature of this month, the beauty of this month. And this is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So one of the, one of the things that this, this month does is, is uh, when you are practicing this, because the path of perfection, it's, uh, you know, like um, when you start martial art, they do all these moves and you just keep doing this and you keep doing that. And, keep, and then at one point, the kids, they quit. A lot of the young people, they quit and say, okay, what's next? But they don't know what the master is trying to do. Right? He's trying to he's trying to teach you to become a master. And at one point, if you stick with it, then you would see that's how you become a master martial artist. But you have to keep repeating these things. So that's why Ramadan comes. You keep repeating and keep repeating, and keep repeating until you turn uh, the the uh, you turn this rock into a diamond. It takes time. It takes time for it to, to, to change. Um, in, in, in Iqbal, he, he said that, you know, uh, uh, in, in a poem, he said, Ahli mafil ko dikadu asari seyqali ishq, sangi imruz ko aine farda karde. He said, the, the, uh, the author, the effect of seyqal, seyqal is, you know, Mawlana Rumi says, seyqali kun, seyqali kun, seyqali. Keep polishing, keep polishing, keep polishing that heart. You keep polishing. He said, if you keep doing it, today's rock would turn into tomorrow's mirror. Right? And that's the whole point of Ramadan is that at one point, we will become like a mirror from a hard rock into a mirror. But it's hard work. Polishing is hard. It's not easy. And we just have to continue doing this and be grateful that Allah has given us life to see this Ramadan. In the famous tradition, they say that so the Sahaba, uh, the, the first six months of the year before Ramadan, they used to make dua, Ya Allah, keep us alive to see Ramadan. Ya Allah, keep us alive to see Ramadan. After Ramadan was finished, the next six months of the year, they would say, Ya Allah, accept our Ramadan. Ya Allah, accept our Ramadan. The entire year was revolved around Ramadan. So that's the, that's the, the power of this month. It's a month of the Qur'an, it's a month of mercy, it's a month of forgiveness, it's a month that everyone, I don't care what people have done in their lives, you can become a saint and enter paradise in this month. If you just practice, in the, if you just get close to Allah in this month, because we have a, we have a night in this month. This, this is the greatest month of the year. And Abdullah Ansari said that, he said, when Allah created the the Heavens and the earth, he created the 12 months. We're there from the beginning. And he said, but he veiled month of Ramadan from everybody. It was veiled. Nobody knew the merits of it. Until it was unveiled when the Prophet ﷺ, the, in the uh, second year of Hijrah, 18 months after they uh, migrated to Medina, when Allah revealed the verse of month of Ramadan, that what this month is. Uh, the merits of it was, was, was actually all of them were... were, uh, were, were will not reveal to, to anybody else until the, it's exclusive for our Prophet in his Ummah, uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So uh, let's 
make an intention that you know we actually benefit from this month and in Laylatul Qadr is a night for sinners, is a night for people of disobedience, is a night for people of forgetfulness, is a night for people who, you know, just ordinary people, Muslim, you know, just Masakim, just Fuqara, people who just, okay, we made a mistake, we, for, we forgot. And Allah gives a second chance uh, that in one night He give you a lifetime reward. Like literally, it gives you a lifetime reward. And the hadith says that if you fast in Ramadan, Allah will forgive your entire sins in the past. But if you can't fast, there are people who can't fast, right? The people who are sick and old. Then if they do qiyam in Ramadan, then Allah will forgive their sins of the past. But then the mercy of Allah says, okay, if you even do qiyam on Laylatul Qadr, I forgive all your sins of the This is the beauty of this religion. So Allah is, make, is, 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 is trying to make an excuse in order for us to enter paradise. So he's just giving us all these opportunities. Just one night, stay up on Laylatul Qadr, and you can, you can uh, inshallah, get the reward of 83 uh, plus years of worship, inshallah. Jazakallah khairan. I don't know what time it is. Um, uh, yeah. If you have any questions, uh, inshallah, we can entertain that otherwise. Alhamdulillah. No, it's a good question. Um, Dr. Asif, yeah. my teacher is here, so I want to answer that. I'll ask him. Mega Master Baghi, Joanna, I cast a car, make on a book, Mega Nameton, and Bakar Rosa, we get him. Yeah, so the question was if somebody's, uh, you know, people are working, they say, oh, I'm working, they're young, they're not old, and they say, oh, I can't fast while I'm working, you know. I, go early to work and to late or whatever. Difficult construction work and people who do things like that. Can they do fidya and not fast? So the Sheikh said no uh, because they, they're not old uh, or, or, uh, uh, or don't have like a chronic disease that they can't fast in the future. So they can actually, even if they can't fast, they have to make it up if they miss it. So only for those people who cannot fast in the future, they can do fidya. Um, but people who can, uh, and if, if they're young, then they should just make it up if they miss it. I, I know I know a lot of people who fast and they, they go to work before uh, suhoor. Like they actually do suhoor at work and they're there till like an hour before the start, but they do still fast. So it's a choice, uh, but those who can might be a, a very difficult position, but they can make it up, inshallah. And then another thing that Dr. said was very good is that like people who, who travel for work, so he gave a good example that if you work in Sacramento and you're like in, in, in here, that's like an hour 45 minutes drive. Uh, by Sharia, you're a musafir, you're a traveler. But that doesn't make you a musafir, a traveler, to, to break your fast because you do that every day. So you're not, you're not really a musafir because this is part of your work. You go every day there. Yeah, and, and then the same thing with the prayer. You can, you can, if you're working Sacramento, you're coming here, you have to do the full prayer. You're not doing traveler prayer. Yeah. The eye drop you can actually put even neural it also you can put the eye drop uh, is fine. Uh, the kohol and eye drop is fine. Balia, as gusha for the other. I'm not sure, but neural it don't. Yeah, 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 yeah. In, in, the, in the classic fatwa is basically that you can do surma, it's fine. The Prophet ﷺ did surma. Uh, but the eye drop, you should do it in the after you break your fast and in the suhoor time. 
but the new fatwa in the European Council, uh, Fatwa Council, they said that you can do it. So that's, you have to just, you know, choose yourself, people. There are a lot of people who have taqwa and they really want to follow the classic and a lot of the, the you know what, if, if it's not necessity, then, uh, then, then don't do it. You know, follow the classic, the classic fatwas. That's what I follow uh, mostly, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so just to be more careful and more, you know, it, it's better than to just, you know, take the, the easier route. They say that, you know, always take the harder route when it comes to worship. And, you know, and, and, and yeah. So he said that uh, uh, that there's a canal from the eye into the nose and from the nose into the throat that actually will go from there. And they said that sometimes you feel that saltiness in your throat is because of your tears drop that goes from your eye into your nose into your throat. That's the reason. So those things will go and, and it can nullify your fast. So the, the best thing is to stay away from it. But one of the things is that there are these fatwas that the ulama give that is on them and not on us. So people need to just depend on how scrupulous you want to be on the issue yourself. Well, no. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, the, 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 uh, the thing is that in the ghusl, the nose and the, and the mouth is, is far to do. You have to gargle and you have to sniff the water. But in wudu, it's not a sunnah. So you really do, you don't have to sniff the water into your nose in, in wudu. Uh, you just have to be careful in Ramadan. And then you gargling as, as well. Yeah, just washing your mouth is fine. Yeah. So, yeah, just, you have to just be... You well, it's you have to do the sunnahs, but I'm just saying you don't have to, you know, and like in the, uh, it's not like in the ghusl you have to gargle the water, so you can just wash your mouth, but just be careful about gargling because sometimes it, it does people accidentally it goes to their their throat. Yeah. Yeah. Dental procedure, but pichkari, your vaccination, vaccination or or pichkari ke bade dam don. Wakte ke amali hote. Pichkari. Yeah, this is a Khtalafi issue, and so doctor said that uh, in the Hanafi fiqh, there's a there's a qaida that anything that brings changes to your body, you can't do that. Like any if you put if you put, uh, for example, if you put an IV, it's like food. Like you can just put IV, it's, 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 it does the same thing as food. So you can't put an IV in. Or if you injection, especially vaccination stuff, that actually brings a, a change into your body. Um, in the fatwa of the European Council that he read from the books on Atul Fatwa, they say that you can, uh, they, they permit, again, these are the modern fatwas and I don't have any issue people following it because I actually respect the ulama that did this, uh, but it is a European 
ulama fatwa. So it's, it's, it's very modern, and, 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 uh, but it's respectful, uh, with no disrespect to them. Um, but there's a difference between that and the classics. I tend to stay with the classics mostly, uh, unless there's no other way out. Uh, they say that you can't actually, they actually use the, the, if you pull, even you do tooth operation, you pull your tooth out, you can do that. And uh, as long as the blood doesn't go in your throat, so you don't swallow the blood, that's the key. And that's a very, you know, when you go to dentist, it's, uh, you just have to be careful because uh, a lot of the blood will, will be around the throat area. But as long as the blood doesn't go in, your, your, your fast is valid according to the European fatwa, but according to the classic uh, Hanafi books that, uh, you, you know, injections that changes the body, uh, you can't do that. Uh, or, or, or the, especially in the, in the, in the tooth. Sure. So if, if they get their uh, their menstruation in the middle of the day, is that what you're saying, right? Or if they have an operation or something, that's a procedure. I can make an emergency operation, maybe a better operation, because you can do it yeah, so uh, it automatically invalidates your, your, your fasting. So you have to make that day up. So you, don't, you, you can fast. If you do operation or, or something like that, that you will, yeah. Yeah, and if you have, he said that if you have, uh, let's say, the next day you have an operation, Something happens, say we're gonna he said that night don't make intention for, for fasting. So because you know it's gonna break your fast. Yeah. And then you have to make qada, you have to make up for that one day. Yeah. Yeah. That's a very good question. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, so the question was, if you get up, uh, if you forget to make intention one day, but you, you intend to fast the whole month, obviously, but you get up and you don't make intention. Doctor answered that in the first session. He said that when you, in the intention in the Hanafi Madhab is in the heart. It's not on the tongue. If you see it on the heart and on the tongue, it's better, but it's just, just in the heart. So the fact that you get up for suhoor, why do you get up? To fast, right? That's the intention. So that's the that's the intention. That I mean, when you get up for suhoor, that's your intention. Even if you don't say anything, you already did the intention. But if you say it, it's obviously better, nur and ala nur. But that's the intention when you get up. So the the the, the question is this: There's a, can they make one intention for the whole month, or because the Malik is, I think they can do that. In the, but or as, every night. Oh. 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 So it's good to make. I always I have forgiveness, and uh, a couple of times uh, last year, you know, then I got up for fajr. It was fajr. I missed suhoor. So you know, it happens. And so I make the intention at the beginning of the month that you know, Ya Allah, you know that I forget stuff. So it's, I intend to fast for the whole month of Ramadan, inshallah. And then, but I, every night, obviously, you try to make the intention. And, and I actually make my kids say the same thing. I said, just make the intention for the whole month, uh, the days that you're able to fast, you'll fast. Yeah, so the doctor said also, uh, when you come for prayer, uh, let's say there's a jama'ah going on, and you come for prayer, you don't have to make intention because you came to pray, that's your intention. So you walk in, oh, I gotta, you know, that's the intention that you came in, you just stand in, and you can just stand in line 
and, and start the praying. You don't have to say, oh, I intend to pray for units of fard of asr and I face the qabr. That's good. It's, it's additional. But for the Hanafis, the fact that you're coming for the masjid to pray, that's your intention. Yeah. The intention is very easy for the Hanafis. For, for other madhahib, is a little bit difficult. Yeah. Yeah. They have to say it on their, some, on their tongue. They have to say it. If the Hanafi is the Shafi Yostan, Malia, Shafi Yostan. All right. Seven oh nine. Five more minutes. Alhamdulillah. Malia. Okay, so the question is that if you have the uh, uh, blood work, you have an appointment to get some blood and do blood work on yourself, and you're fasting. Obviously, when they do the blood work, you will do breaks because the blood coming out for the Hanafis, it, it breaks your wudu. So, yeah, then the fasting doesn't break because nothing enters you, and they take it out. So your fast is good, uh, if it doesn't break the fast, when, you, when they take the blood out. But if they put something in, that's when it is problematic. But you know, just like uh, cupping, when they do cupping or bloodletting, you can do that and it's still, your, your fast is good. Yeah. Yes, yeah, a very good question. So the Quran actually, when it was uh, came down, it was on the lawh mahfuz. It's in this protected tablets that Allah has put it on on this protected tablet. So then from there, on the twenty seventh night or whatever night that Laylatul Qadr was, right? In Anzal Nahufi Laylatul Qadr, we revealed this Quran on Laylatul Qadr. They came to the Sama Dunya, to the worldly uh, from this heavenly. It came to the to this world. From there, it took twenty three years for it portion by portion to come to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that's that's the, the the what Allah is talking about in the Quran is. That, that 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 whole Quran coming from the Law Mahfuz into the Sama Dunya, into the worldly sky, and then from there uh, it took twenty three years. But then one night it all came down to that. Well, Quran, the the the, orig, the the Quran is because it's the uncreated word of God. The act, the, you know, not the mushaf that we have, like the book. That's that's the printout. But the actual Quran, when we talk about the Allah Mahfuz, that's uncreated word of God. So this is beyond time and space, right? But then when it comes in into the world as revelation, it comes in a, in a specific time and space. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Yes, yes, about the seven hundred. Is 
Yeah, no, Qur Qur this, the Quran is a revelation, but it's the word of God is not is uncreated because God is not created; He's a creator. So anything that comes, yeah, yeah. Well, well I can because my time I have one minute. <laughs> yeah, but that's that's a it's a really actually a, a nice topic. It's, it's on aqidah about the the our belief in the Quran. And because it's, it is a lot of people, it's very hard to understand because when you look at the Mus'haf, they say, oh, so this is, no, this is a paper that's printed. This is, we're not talking about this. So you have, you have the form and you have the meaning, right? So these, and so a good example I can give you, when you open your Quran on your phone, right? So when you open it, you have you have the Quran written in there, right? But is that the Quran or is it zero one zero one zero one zero one zero zero one zero zero one? Right? So what do we what we see is different than what it is inside of this, right? So that's where people kinda like they're saying, Oh, is this is this the uncreated word of God? No, I just but they, they can't penetrate the one layer of the to the meaning of that, to see beyond that. And and, and that's part of our aqidah, um, I mean Okay, the one on one that that you go through these uh, understanding. Um, it's a fascinating subject, you know. But uh, I wish we had more time. But maybe inshallah we can do a class on that. Uh, so, yeah, this goes in, in under the ilm of kalam and and aqida. Yeah. Go ahead. On fences that are only? Okay. Um, I give my daughter a shear me there. Uh, Tano, but a lot of the care for that bushier as a column machine. You okay, but I had a lot of the bush. I came as a shear, which is a mechor and a shear mother. I'm made on a بعض اولاد هستن که مثلا هم شیر خشک میخورن هم شیره به حساب مادر so if if you uh, milking your son uh, or your daughter or your child then you can break a fast obviously and then even if you are milking somebody else's, like if somebody says, hey, you know, there are people who milk other people's children, you can still break your fast for that as well. In terms of children who are half on, like, let's say, powder milk and half on, he said that depends on the situation that if, if it's going to harm the baby not to give the mother's milk, then you break your fast uh, and to, get to, to make sure that he gets, the child gets what they need. No, they, they just make up the days. That's make up the days. No, no, yeah. There, there's no punishment for it, no. Yeah. There's no punishment for it. But one of the, the other beauty, uh, and then the woman who come into age on the day in Ramadan, in the middle of the day, so that day they don't have to make it up, which is very mercy-based. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So in in the in the, yeah, that day if, if somebody comes into an age a girl and and they they menstruate on that day in the, in the let's say two in the afternoon and they it's Ramadan, they don't that day they don't have to make it up. So they're they're forgiven for that day. But out of respect for Ramadan, they shouldn't eat anything until iftar. Just just out of respect for for the month. Yeah. No for me.
میگم خانم ها میتونن اتکاف کنن یا باید روزه داشته باشن که اتکاف کنن برای عبادت میتونن اتکاف کنن Uh, the question is about itikaf of, uh, you know, if you're not fasting, like let's say you want to make itikaf outside of month of Ramadan just for ibadah. So, the Sheikh said that many of the scholars, they say that if you're doing itikaf, it has to be accompanied with fasting. So you have to fast and do the itikaf. Uh, that's majority of the scholars. Uh, that's the, yeah. yeah. Nafli? Uh, so the, the thing is like I, I think somebody told them that if you come to the masjid you put your feet in and then you did the intention of fasting there's a difference uh, if, you, if you go by the by the Hanafi fiqh and by the traditional uh, Islamic teachings there's rulings in itikaf and that's what everybody goes with so if you if you want to do ibadah you can do ibadah all night you can do prayer salat al-tasbih tahajjud all of that Quran reading but if you want to do itikaf as, 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 as practice, then I think the, the best way is what, what Doktor said, is that to do that two types of itikaf we talked about. One is Ramadan itikaf, which is sunnah. One is uh, wajib itikaf, which is nazri. When we say nazri, if you have like, uh, Ya Allah, if, if this happens, I will do itikaf, right? So that's, that becomes wajib. It's actually higher than the sunnah. So you have to do it. So, um, you know, like, I know a person who had, you know, they had their son in jail or something like that, uh, in juvenile hall, and they said, if he comes out, I'll do it to cough. So then when the kid comes out, then you have to do the, it, you, you know, it's, it's wajib for you to do the eight to cough. So when you do the eight to cough, you fast. That's what the majority of the ulama, they say. You fast and you do the cough. You do it properly. It's, 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 uh, but now a lot of people, I know there's a, in, in uh, there's all these young kids, they're like, we do need to cough. They do the cough in the masjid, and then two hours later, they're playing basketball outside, and they go to Denny's, and they come back to the, I'm like, what kind of eat to cough is that? <laughs> but, you know, but, you know, I'm, I'm happy they're doing that. At least they're in the masjid. So, young people, alhamdulillah. Yeah. All right. Jazakallah khair and subhanak Allahumma bihamdika shalom an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Ya Allah, give us so fear to worship you in this blessed month of Ramadan. Ya Allah, protect everyone who is in this gathering from the, all of all of the evil of their time. Protect them, protect their ahli bayt, protect their children and their families. Ya Allah, from all the facade and fitna of our time, from all of the airborne diseases, from Corona and all its variants. Ya Allah, ya rahman rahimin. Ya Allah, anybody who's here has any haja, ya Allah. Make it easy for them, Allahumma yassir wa la ta'asir, and remove all the problems from their lives, Ya Allah. Anybody who's sick here, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Shafi, Ya Rahman Rahim, and give them shifa, Ya Allah, healing from, from all of the diseases, whether it's spiritual, mental, or physical, Ya Rahman Rahim, and Ya Allah, make the affairs of life easy for everyone, and, and give us tawfiq to worship you, and put your love and the love of your messenger in our hearts, in the hearts of our children, in the hearts of our offspring, until the yawm al qiyamah, that we all live with kalimatu la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And we die with kalimatu la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And we are raised on the yawm al-qiyamah with kalimatu la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And Ya Allah, on that day, Ya Allah, for all of us, Ya Allah, and our children, Ya Allah, make us amongst the people that you're pleased with us and your Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is proud of us when he sees us, Ya Rahman Rahman. Sallallahu ta'ala ala sayyidina wa habibina wa qurrati al-ayyunina muhammadin wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi jmeen. Bi rahmatika, Ya Rahman Rahman. Bi rahmatika, Ya Rahman Rahman. Bi rahmatika, Ya Rahman Rahman. Bi rahmatika, Ya